Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we will look at how to rank values in Excel, including tired values, using the filter function and a few friends. So the first thing we want to do is look at ranking the names in this list by their value in column C. And we're looking for a top five ranking to start with. So in cell F6, we're going straight in with the brilliant filter function to do this job for us. That's going to prompt for the array to filter and ultimately return, which for us is column A, the names. And that data is formatted as a table, so I've got a table reference there. A comma brings us on to the filter criteria. Now for this first one, we're looking at the top person, number one. But then in the next row, we want number two and number three and so on. And that's entered in column E. So we're going to reference if the column C value is equal to, and then we're going to bring in the large function. Now for number one, I could use max. But to keep all the formulas the same, I'm referencing it with large. The array is once again column C, but then the kth value, I'm going to reference the cell that I have the rank in. So that this same formula will work for all five. A close bracket for the large function brings me back to filter. I'm then going to put in a comma and just ask it, it to return no value if it doesn't find anybody with that rank which in this example right now is not going to be a problem because they are all there. That's the filter function done and pressing enter will return the top person. But then as I copy this down, I've now got the top five names in that list. Now, ultimately I want to return what that value is in column G, but I'm going to hold off on that for the moment because I want to take this example further. And in cell E3, I have a drop down list where somebody can select whether they want the top three, the top five, or the top eight. At the moment, I have five, but it's fixed the way it's been entered into column E. So I'm going to change that. I'm just going to remove the rankings from that cell. And my formula in column F is not going to be happy with that because it's referencing them but I'm going to replace it with the sequence function because I want the number of rankings, three, five, or eight, to be dependent on what's in cell E3. So one of the new dynamic array functions is sequence. And this has got some very niche examples, this being one of them. It returns a sequence of numbers, exactly what I want. It prompts for four arguments. The first one is how many rows and the answer to that is the reference to cell E3. Whatever number of rows is mentioned in there is what I need. The number of columns, I'm going to enter one as it's going to be one column wide. It is, however, an optional argument. I've also got an optional argument for what number to start with and how many numbers to step. Now, I could continue to answer those and put comma start for number one, comma step one. And that would be fine. It would also ultimately be a fruitless task because it's going to do that anyway. If I keep those answers there, I'll close bracket and press enter. And at the moment, I have this calc error because I do not have anything entered in cell E3. If I put something in E3, such as 3, and when I choose 5, I get 5. And when I choose 8, I get 8. This formula does need copying down, however. Copy it down, and I receive a spill error. And if I select one of those cells, this first one, and I'll see what's going on. If I can select the obstructing cells, and it references the cell underneath. If I delete that, I see I have an array of answers here. Bob and Hiran. And when we look at the data on the left, I can see that Bob and Hiran have the same value. So we have a tired value here, and that is initially causing that spill error. The filter function doesn't know how to handle that. 
Now, as I've moved things around, I do have an answer here. It is now working, but we want this to be dynamic. It's also questionable whether we want Bob and Hiran to be there because they do have the same value. And at the moment, Bob is ranking higher. Now, what I would like to do is list Bob and Hiran on the same cell, on the same row, because they have the same value. And then rank number seven won't be Hiran, it'll be Jazek, and number eight will be somebody else. So let's go back to the initial formula in cell F6, and around filter, I'm going to bring in the text join function. With text join, I have to specify a delimiter as it concatenates these values. I'm going to put the delimiter as a comma and a space, but I could enter anything there if I wanted a hyphen or a slash or something. Do I want to ignore empty cells? I'm going to enter true for that. It's not going to be a factor for us. And then a comma leads us finally on to the filter function, which is going to be the different parts of text. That is what's returning the array of two values in that case, Bob and Hiran. So let's click on to the end, close bracket. We can run this function down, and now we get this. So I do successfully get Bob and Hiran in one cell, one row. However, it's still using that array, and now I've got them in two rows, rather than the individual names on different rows. So it's actually a bit worse than it was a moment ago. But we're going to deal with this. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a couple of helper columns to make things a little bit simpler. And I'm also going to use the data I've got in column F as the way of fixing it. There are so many different ways that, first of all, we could rank the values, because you may not be happy with my approach and you may want something different. There's different ways of ranking, but also different ways of solving this issue right now. Now what I would like to do is using column F, I'm going to count how many names there are in there. Because once I know how many names there are, I know how many rankings I need to skip. You know, so Bob and Hiran are on one, so I need to skip a name. So Jazek can come into seventh place. Now I'm going to use this in column J right now. I'm going to use a len function to count the number of characters in column F. But then what I'm going to do is subtract how many characters there are without the comma. So I'm going to use a function called substitute here, the text in cell F6, the old text is a comma, the new text is nothing, and I do not need the instance number. So that is essentially replacing the comma of nothing, len will count how many there are, and it gets subtracted from the answer with the comma. So when I press enter and copy this down to the bottom here, we can see that the ones with a comma get the the fact that there's one, there's one comma in each of those. I know if there's one comma, there's two names. If there's two commas, there's three names, etc. Armed with this information, I'm using another helper column in I. Now, the very first one in I6, as it is right now, but the first name, I'm just going to enter number one, because that's going to be number one regardless. But then from then on, what if there's a tie? For this, I'm going to write a formula that references that previous value, number one in this case, adds one on top, like a normal ranking would be, next one's two, next one's three, etc. But I also want to add on a reference to the counting of the commas there. So I know if there's a comma, there's one extra name, if there's two commas, there's two extra names, etc. Press enter and copy that one down, and now we have a different type of ranking. If I can go back to my initial formula in F6, and instead of referencing the rank to its left, I'm going to reference the rank in I6, my newly created helper column. Press enter, copy this down, and that has now handled that ranking issue. I now have Bob and Hiran on one line. Jazek comes into ranking number seven, and Mark has now been introduced as ranking number eight. So this is a way of handling that problem. I can now hide those two columns because I don't really need them to be visible. For column G, I want to return the value. Now that, if I go to my original formula, 
it's just a case of copying the large function because that's the value we're testing. So I can just bring that large function in there. Helps if I put an equals at the start of a formula and then copy that down to the bottom. And now I've got the value. Now let's test this out. I've got eight at the moment. If I choose three, okay. And if I choose five, okay. We can see the ranking, the sequence function is working, but the names and the values are not reacting to that. To deal with this, just going to finish this off with a nice simple if function around it. If the rank value next door is equal to nothing, then do nothing, otherwise run that formula. And if I run that, and then repeat it for the next cell. And now if I change the top end to three, I get three names, five, I get five, and eight, I have eight. And I guess for the big moment here, if I switch this back to five for a moment, I see we have Celia on 90, Kevin's on 89. If I can find Kevin in the list and change him from 89 to 90, that creates a clash with Celia. And look at that. Kevin moves into a tie with Celia. And the other names move into position. If I change it back to 8, then now I've got Maggie creeping into 8th place. So this is a completely dynamic ranking of those values. Using the filter function along with sequence. Two brilliant new dynamic array functions. But also getting some help from some old friends like substitute, len, and if. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel, and come check us out at computergaga.com.